Hey guys, welcome back to Retro Peace Theater. So, uh, we are now in the Temple of Time. We got all three spiritual stones last episode, and, uh, I didn't want to go through this, uh, last episode because it is a bit cutscene intensive. It takes about five minutes or so to get through. And this is the first time we see a 3D version of the Master Sword, which is really cool. Um, kind of a King Arthur Sword in the Stone thing here, which is nice. You know, you've got that Sword of Destiny feel. I like the light coming through the window up there. That's a nice touch. Here we go. We are going to yank the sword out of the stone. can't get over those ears, man. So now we learn that this whole time Ganondorf has been using us to get inside the Door of Time. If you remember, he poisoned the Deku Tree because the Deku Tree wouldn't give him the Kokiri Emerald. He went to the Gorons, and they said no. He went to the Zora, they said no. And now we can kind of extrapolate that uh, he is the reason that Jabu Jabu had all of those problems inside of him and he caused the chain of events of Rudo being um, swallowed by the great fish and that he would have left that letter in a note for you to find so this whole time he's more or less been watching you to make sure that you do his dirty work And what you're about to see here is a really cool concept that I love. Um, so the Temple of Time was created to protect the entrance to the Sacred Realm. The Sacred Realm is where the Triforce is. And this is the Chamber of Sages here. Um, and he's just kind of giving us the history here of it. Um, in a couple Zelda games you had to have a certain amount of hearts in order to pull up uh, the Master Sword. Uh, in Breath of the Wild, you had to have, I, it's been a while, uh, I want to say it's 11 or 13, but you had to have a certain number of hearts to be able to pull the sword out of the stone. And that's a callback to the very first Zelda game, where you had to have a certain number of hearts to pull the uh, sword out, which was kind of a cool callback. Um, so here, you're able to pull it out because you are the hero of time and the hero of destiny. But they've sealed you away for seven years. And I want to talk about that for a sec. That is really, really tragic. Like, put all this, you know, when you play this the first time, it's like, oh, cool, Link's all grown up now and whatnot. But if you think about it, it's really tragic what they did to him. You know, first off, he's an orphaned kid raised by a tree and a bunch of woodland elves, the Kokiri. He suddenly gets this destiny dropped on him. The first time we meet him, he's had nightmares, apparently for many moons. We would consider that to be several months. Um, you know, he's got this destiny dropped on him. He's got to face monsters and all these things as a kid. And now, you know, he thinks his journey is done. He goes and he grabs the Master Sword to defeat evil, only to learn that he's had to have his soul trapped away for seven years. Think of everything he's missed out on, everything happening in the world that he wasn't there to stop or protect against. And maybe they saved his life by doing it, but it was uh, it's a pretty rough hand to be dealt, you know? And I always liked that they wrote Link as such a strong character that he was like, well, you know, if this is what needs to be done, Let's do it. But, uh... And for you, only a few moments has passed, but in the rest of the world, and you're going to see it here in a moment, the rest of the world's, you know, falling apart. All because, you know, Ganon tricked you and was able to take things over. 
So this is the light medallion. There are five uh, temples that we have to go to and get five more medallions to awaken the sages and use their power to help us stop Ganondorf. And now you're back. And I love this shot because it's so dark and there's just this tiny ray of hope, this tiny ray of light on you. And some of the weapons we had as a kid we can't use anymore. We can't use the, the boomerang and we can't use the slingshot. Um, but we're going to get similar weapons as adults to replace the effectiveness of those. And ultimately, I have two stops I'm going to make before I can, before I go to the uh, Forest Temple, uh, which is the first one. You're going to learn about here in a second. Um, one of them is optional, one of them is required. So one of the temples is in a deep forest. One on a high mountain, one under a vast lake. I think we can extrapolate where those are. The, the Kukiri Forest, uh, which is actually it's going to be in the Lost Woods, uh, on a high mountain is uh, Death Mountain. Vast Lake is Lake Hylia. Uh, the House of the Dead, that's actually a graveyard inside of the uh, Kakariko Village. Um, and the Goddess of the Sand, which we have to go through the Gerudo Fortress to get to. We haven't been there yet. And as we see Sheik here, we notice Sheik has very similar garments on that Impa had uh, when we met Impa in the courtyard of the castle um, with the eye of the Sheikah on the, the symbol on the chest, place there, chest piece. I don't believe there's anything else if I talk to Sheik. So now I have to go to Kakariko Village. But we're not going to go to Kakariko Village yet. And I'm going to save my game here. Death Mountain swirling in the background. The market has changed a lot. Now it's full of re-deads and it's all run down. And even the drawbridge is destroyed. But that also means we can go in and out of there without having to worry about the day-night cycle. So first, we're actually going to go to Lon Lon Ranch. And if you remember, a few episodes ago, we were here, we got a song called Epona's Song. Um, I mentioned it would be very important later on. Well, here it is. And Navi is just telling me that we need to go to Kakariko Village. And I'm just ignoring her. 
And if you've ever played a Zelda game before, you should know, never attack the chickens. So we're going to do two things here. We're going to talk to this guy. You learned that he's, uh, <clears throat> he is Ingo. And that Talon, who previously had owned the ranch, um, has been basically overthrown. And now Ingo, who is... I didn't meet him in the last game because I just kind of skipped by him because it wasn't important. But Ingo was like a stable boy. And now he runs the ranch. So a lot has changed in different areas in the last seven years. So we're going to pay him 10 rupees to ride. And if we play opponent's song, Pona will come running over. And you can always distinguish a Pona from the other horses because she's kind of a reddish orange and she has a cool uh, decorative saddle and bridle. And we're going to speak to him. And we're actually going to say, Yes, we're done. <clears throat> and then we're going to talk to him again and we're going to go back in here. So, once again, we're going to get Epona. And we're going to get on Epona. And we're going to talk to him again. And he's going to challenge us to a race for 50 rupees. Now, we're actually going to be racing him twice, <clears throat> and I apologize for my voice, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. There's a couple tricks to the race. First is, as much as possible, you want to hug the inner corner, and the first chance you get, get ahead of him. There it is. The other thing is, never use all your carrots, because you will slow down before they can refill. But if you leave one carrot, they will refill much faster. And then I just use the last one to cross the finish line. So the first race is easy. It's the second race that's really hard. And right off the bat, we have to get right in front of him. And then we have to hug that inside corner without stalling. Because if you turn too much, you'll actually point towards the fence and stop running. So this is the hard part. I've gotten in front of him, as long as I hug this inside corner, I should be just fine. There it is. And since we ran the... since we won that race, we actually get to keep the horse. So now we have the horse, but we can't go anywhere. Now there's a couple ways out. Way number one is we can actually jump over that fence where he is, or we can go my favorite route, which involves jumping over this fence because it's a cooler way out. And that is a sturdy horse. <laughs> That's like a 40 foot jump. Now we own a horse. And the cool thing about Epona is that no matter where we are in the open world, uh, if we play her song, she'll come to us. So, that's useful. 
And right now, we're gonna head to Kakarika Village. So that was the first thing. And getting Epona is entirely, entirely optional. Um, you don't have to. Um, but I think most people who play the game do end up getting her at some point because you're gonna go by Lamon Ranch. Um, that was weird. Um, now she cannot go upstairs. So, this is where we leave her. But, it's a much faster way to get around. Much more convenient way to get around. And now we are at Kakariko Village. Which, there haven't been a lot of changes, but there's been a few. And where we need to go right now is in the graveyard. And we just happen to be here at night, that's why no one's around. And... I'm trying to remember which one it is. Is it this one? Well, this is one that you can go into, but not the one I was thinking of. And there's a fairy fountain back here, which I've got three bottles. Let's fill them up. There's some pose in the graveyard here, ghosts. I'm trying to remember which one it is. It's one of these. No, just a. That's a Poe. You can get a Poe in a bottle. You can sell the Poe's. I'm not gonna mess with it. It's one of the ones that has flowers in front of it, I think. Well, I thought it was that one, but that's the one we were just in. Try this one. I feel really bad. I should know this. Here we go. Yep. So this is the Gravekeeper. Well, the dead Gravekeeper. And we're gonna race him. So the trick to this is he's gonna throw fire at us, don't hit it. And ultimately, first chance you get, get to the end before him. And he's always moving faster than you, but there's one point in the race where you're gonna lose sight of him. And you're gonna have to decide on what way to go. Yeah. See, I got hit. So now it's going to hurt my chances. But he throws the fire to help. So, Oh, wrong way. My bad. And that may be it. I may have just messed it up. We'll see. And there we go. I'm catching back up now. That was close. Hey. 
There it is. And we won. Well, he beat us, but we got him there. And this is the item we get that replaces the boomerang. And then we can keep racing him, and he'll give us rupees, and I think at one point we get a heart piece. But now, we have the hook shot. Now we can go, and we can actually go to the first dungeon. And we can use it to pull certain things towards us as well. And we're going to equip it because we're going to need it. And we're going to put the ocarina there and that there. Okay. Now, see these blocks? They kind of resemble the Temple of Time. At least the design on the wall there. So we're going to pull up that song. The Song of Time. And if we play the Song of Time in front of the Blocks of Time, as I'm going to call them, they go away. <clears throat> and there's a heart piece over there that we're going to try to get. We're going to come back and actually see this dude later on. The guy who's down there with the organ grinder. Making music. We're going to see him later on. But right now, that's all for here. on our horse, and now we're going to head back to the Kokiri Forest. Kiri Forest looks quite a bit different as well. It's now overrun with monsters and Deku Scrubs. And if we dive down there, we'll end up back at Sora's Domain. And remember this guy? So, he promised Saria he would never let anyone through. But, if I play her song... He doesn't know or remember that it's you. Hey. 
Uh, this is not where we need to go. This is. It's kind of confusing after a bit, trying to remember where to go. Which I believe it's this way. Yep. And we are back here. So this is one of those moments where we're going to want to use Z-targeting to look around corners. Um, because we have what I believe are Moblins. But if we hit them from behind with our new fancy hook shot, it kills them instantly. If you get into an actual sword conflict with them, you will lose. Actually, you can hit him from the front, too. Usually, I just hit him from behind. Alright. So, we're here, and we're gonna take him out. Oh, missed. But if they see you, they will charge at you with their spear. And it's quite painful. Oh. That's not where I need to go. We're gonna go here. And see what's over yonder. No? And there he is. Now, he won't see me if I stay right here. And that takes care of him. And... This is the one I was looking for. So if he were to see me, he'll end up charging at me and knocking me backwards into the water. Hey, Rupee. Okay, we are at full health. Now there's a giant one here. Now, avoiding this guy is easy. I say that right as I get hit, so he's gonna go over there. Come on. Come on. He's gonna go over there. 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 Ugh. There. That made me feel better. <sighs> and this should look familiar to everybody because this is where we met Saria last time. And now we have the flashback moment. So I'm going to end this episode when this cutscene here is over uh, because the Forest Temple is going to take a bit. Now, the songs that we learn as an adult are warp songs. And these are extremely useful for getting around so we don't have to go through those mazes and such again. Um, I still hold this game as one of the best Zelda soundtracks of all time. right inside the temple. And this is where we had to have the hook shot, so we couldn't get in here before now. Gotta get a little closer. Until we had the hook shot. Which does that. So now, 
Alright guys, that's where I'm going to end this episode, right here inside the Forest Temple. I uh, hope you've enjoyed everything so far. We are well on our way. We're about a third of the way through the game, give or take. And uh, we're moving right along. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.